Hey, this is Philip Eckberg, and welcome to today's video where we're going to talk about string interpolation in C Sharp, right after this. So let's jump into Visual Studio and have a look at what we can do in order for us to improve the readability of our applications. We'll do this by changing our string.formats into using something like string interpolation. So here we have an example of where we have a console application that's leveraging string.format. So let's just run the application and see what the details would tell us. So it tells us that we're ordering headphones and a mouse, and the total price is 87. And then we have the most expensive item, which is probably the headphones for $49.99. Now, what I want to do here is that I want to improve the readability of the application, and I also want to leverage a few other things in my formatting of my string. So traditionally, what you've been able to do is to say, for instance, that I want to take my total price and only display one or two of the decimals. So with that, we can say colon 0 0.0, .0 in order for us to say that we want to display the price plus one decimal. So now that we run the application again, it'll tell us that the total price is 87.1. Now that's really beneficial, but this is still using the string.format, right? The problem with string.format is if we want to introduce more things in here. So I know for a fact that we have this date when the order was placed. I want to add that as a first row in my details of my order. So if we want to do that, what we have to do in this case is that we have to introduce another variable in our string.format. So we can, for instance, say date here. And then let's say that we want to do this at the first position in our list here. Normally, this introduces a problem because now we have to go ahead and change all of the other ones and then also make sure that the order of them after the, the comma here for string.format is also intact. So this gets a little bit problematic. Now, alternatively, what we can do is we can simply say that this is the fourth element. And then we can add our date here at the end. Although that becomes rather unnatural to read, right? So this isn't truly readable or flexible. It becomes a little bit ugly, at least in my opinion. So what we can do instead is to introduce string interpolation. So let's introduce that. Let's comment this piece out here so we can compare these two later on. The first thing that we need to do is to, of course, introduce this details variable. Now, in order for us to introduce string interpolation, we'll start off our string with a dollar sign. This here indicates that the string is going to be interpolated. So what that means is that we have an easier way of us introducing variables that we are using in our string. So for instance, we can say that the first one is the date. And then in order for us to capture variables inside our context, we can simply use the curly braces. So what we can do now is to say, for instance, that we have our order dot place that. And now when we save this and run the application, of course, it's going to say the order rate is the third of third, because that's a few days before today. So what we can do here to format this to make it a little bit nicer, because most of us use different types of date formatting. In order for us to use the same formatting that we do with string.format, we can, of course, simply just apply the, the colon here and say that we want to display the day we want to display the month and the year. And now when we run the application again, it's going to say the 3rd of March 2019. So of course, we have the same flexibility that we do with string.format when we're using string interpolation. So what I did now was that I went ahead and converted the application into using string interpolation. So this here looks a lot cleaner. We no longer have to worry about the positioning of our different variables and the elements inside our string. We're still doing the concatenation and the interpolation here. But do you think there's a performance difference in doing this? Now, if we head into Reflector to decompile the application, we can answer that. So now we're inside .NET Reflector. It's an application to allow us to decompile our .NET application. In this case, it's a .NET Core application, but that doesn't really matter. What I've done here is that I've said, display this here as a C Sharp 5 application, which didn't have string interpolation. What you'll see here is that it's decompiling this into something that we are familiar with. It's using string.format behind the scenes, but it's doing all of these amazing things for us to make our code a little bit more readable. So in order for us to make more readable applications, especially when doing these string concatenations, as well as making a little bit more flexible for us to improve this and add more variables in the future, this is a nice addition to the language. 
So in this video, we saw how we can introduce string interpolation in our applications. It becomes a little bit easier for us to make sure that the applications that we are building stay readable and maintainable. I hope you enjoy this short video on string interpolation in C Sharp. Please, if you like this, give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you want more types of videos like this. Thank you so much. My name is Philip Eckberg.